What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Devil's Reign X-Men issue number one tie-in. And if you have not been keeping up with the Devil's Reign, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything that is going on with Daredevil and Mayor Fisk. Now, usually we're alternating between DC Comics and Marvel, but Marvel really has put out so many good comics this week that we are jumping back into Marvel. And a little bit later on today, I'm going to have the death of Doctor Strange Black Knight and X-Men tie-in that is going to be uploaded and you do not want to miss it. And this issue is showing us the aftermath of Mayor Fisk outlawing superheroes, outlawing vigilantes, with him hiring a crap ton of villains to be his thunderbolts, the force that is going to enforce these laws. With the X-Men having a treehouse in New York City, they are currently being targeted for removal. But our girl Emma Frost, she has something to say about that. Now be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into the first issue of this tie-in, and it's gonna be three issues, but we're picking up in the past, when Mayor Fisk is in jail, and though he may be on the outside, he still has his control, with Elektra currently working for him, with Emma Frost currently being under his thumb. He uses the two of them at a whim, using Elektra to go and hunt down some people, because Elektra, she's the muscle. She's the one that goes in and slits the throats. Now, Emma Frost, on the other hand, with her unique abilities, she's the one you send in when you want to convince somebody, when you want to change their mind. And though this is the past, this is going to have huge ramifications for what is going to come. Because if you remember, Wilson Fisk, he has dossiers on everybody. All of their dirty secrets, everything bad they have ever done. Which means, he has one on Elektra, he has one on Emma Frost. And though he used all of this to his benefit in the past, what he had them do is going to come back to haunt them. But with us heading back to the future, picking up in present day, we are at the treehouse. And at the gate of the treehouse, we have U.S. Agent, with him being one of the Thunderbolts, with the police force out in full, they are letting the mutants know that it is time to move this tree, to close down this gateway, because they are no longer allowed inside of New York City as long as they are being the X-Men, as long as they come in costume. That if they are coming to do vigilanteism, if they are coming to try and save people, that they are not wanted here. And as all of this unfolds, Emma Frost immediately heads for the UN. And she goes to talk to Mr. Leland. Now Leland, he was recently resurrected, specifically so that he could be the, the voice of mutant kind in the UN. He is the voice for all mutants throughout the world. And though New York City, they are really trying to, to stir the pot. You know, they're kicking the hive. And usually Emma Frost, with her better judgment, she would just have Cyclops move the treehouse over to New Jersey until all of this is settled. But for Emma Frost, this is really personal because she doesn't like Mayor Fisk and any opportunity to just stick it to him, she's going to take that chance. She will take any opportunity to embarrass Wilson Fisk. And though the UN has no intention of intervening, Emma Frost has some plans up her sleeve. And picking back up at the treehouse, we have US Agent trying to call out the X-Men, telling them that they need to show their face and that their time is up. With him grabbing his shield and throwing it at the gateway, that's where we see his shield fly off because Polaris has made her arrival, and Polaris is just toying with him. And then he tries to deploy all of the agents, all of the police officers that are there with him, but Polaris has ensured that the locks on the doors will not open. So everybody is locked inside their vehicles 
and now U.S. Agent, he's calling in some backup. And Wilson Fisk is going to take this opportunity and wait for the X-Men to attack him. Because if the X-Men attack, it just shows exactly what he has been saying. That we don't need these heroes, that they are violent, they are dangerous, and we need to remove them. And so the X-Men, they need to be very careful in their next steps. They can't go out there just guns blazing. And we see a few of our mutants, they sit around and they discuss what their next option is going to be. Thinking maybe we should just abandon the treehouse for the time being and let all of this blow over. Because if we go out there and we try to fight the Thunderbolts, it's going to look poorly on us. The media is going to flip it and turn it and make us look like the bad guys. Mayor Fisk is going to use it as an opportunity to really jolt his platform. Now, they don't really know what they're going to do. And they're going to take it moment by moment. Going out and at least facing the music, facing US agents and all of these forces. Seeing maybe if they can de-escalate the situation. With Cyclops turning into Captain Krakoa. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with that story, you definitely need to read the X-Men. Because he is Captain Krakoa after, after a reporter found out that he was dead. Or he had died. With the possibility of this information getting out and mutant resurrection really showing its face to the world, this is something mutants want to avoid. So he is now Captain Krakoa when he is out on Earth. And so with our mutants coming outside, Polaris is face to face with US Agent. US Agent asking where his shield is, Polaris saying that she she's pretty sure she returned it, it just made a detour on the other side of the world. The smirk coming off her face in an instant because she is electrocuted. And this is where we see the Thunderbolts. And honestly, the Thunderbolts, they seem to be more made up of almost exclusively Spider-Man villains. But with them standing there, Polaris, she's ready to go and charge in. But the X-Men stop her. They let her know that we can't do this. We can't have an all-out brawl with all of these cameras, all of these eyes on us. And with US Agent telling them it is time for them to leave. This is where we have the arrival of Emma Frost. And she has an official document from the United Nations. The treehouse is now recognized by the UN as a consulate of the sovereign nation of Krakoa. With the X-Men here on a goodwill mission for betterment of all mankind. And she tells US Agent, I would throw you out of this place. But the treehouse is open to everybody. And that includes you. This is Emma Frost playing her political game. Showing that even with her immense amount of power, her influence, she doesn't even need to do anything out of what an ordinary human would do. That if Wilson Fisk wants to play these little mess around games, if he wants to try to ban mutants from all of New York City, he's got another thing coming. And so not being able to make any kind of move, he withdraws the Thunderbolts. Because as it stands, there are other heroes that are all over the city that need rounding up. And to leave the X-Men to him. Now as you can imagine, Emma Frost is pretty happy with herself. Because getting underneath the skin of Wilson Fisk has literally become one of her hobbies. Any opportunity to take a jab at him, she's gonna do it. And though this was a victory today, as we were saying in the beginning of the issue, Wilson Fisk has a dossier on everybody. And with Elektra working for him, he knows exactly who she has killed when he contracted her to do so. And with Emma Frost being a friend of Elektra, he's going to use this as an opportunity to say, look at Emma Frost Associates. He's going to use it to paint her as a murderer or a murderer accomplice. And so the game is just beginning. All right, gang. So as we dive into this Devil's Reign tie-in, we are picking up with issue number two. And right now on the front page of news across New York City, the White Queen is in jeopardy. She is being connected to cold case murders. Right now, sitting down with her attorneys, she is trying to figure out just how how bad things are. And right now, things are very, very bad. 
and right now it is being believed that Emma Frost, she may be responsible for murdering a child. But Emma Frost, she knows the truth. She knows that she never murdered a child. In fact, she helped that child escape. And though Emma Frost has done many shady things over the years, especially while she was under the thumb of Kingpin, manipulating Tony Stark, manipulating She-Hulk in trials, convincing Nick Fury not to do things. She has been doing this for a very, very long time. And so when her attorneys ask her, is there anything else we should be concerned about? There's literally everything to be concerned about. But Emma Frost isn't going to worry about those things. She will face them if they surface. But Kingpin is going to be very careful because he doesn't want anything connecting back to him. He will lose legitimacy if that happens. But Emma Frost, she does have a solution. She knows where that little girl is. And so being able to bring her, show her to everybody, show that she is not dead, she was in fact rescued, this is going to clear her name. And that is what's going to take us years ago at the Hellfire Club. With Emma Frost sitting here enjoying her evening, we have the arrival of Electra, And Electra shows up saying that she needs the help of Emma Frost. Because while she was out working, while she was out doing what Kingpin asked of her, she had been scene. She had been seen by a young child. With Emma reading her mind and seeing everything that happened, rarely is Emma Frost at a loss for words. And Electra kind of takes this offensively, because the truth is, Electra, she may be the muscle. She may go in there and kill them. And while Emma Frost believes she's saving these people, rescuing them and putting them into hiding, most of the time they end up dead, they're in jail, or they go broke. Electra just believes that she is ending all of their suffering before they can really endure what she calls the thousand cuts because that is what she believes Emma Frost does gives them death by a thousand cuts but Emma Frost she decides that she's going to help Electra out they're going to get this little girl and they are going to get her to safety because she saw something which means Kingpin he will stop at nothing to ensure that there are no witnesses with Emma Frost and Electra breaking into this little girl's apartment. Her parents aren't home, out doing whatever it is they're wanting to do. The biggest issue is that this news has already gotten back to Kingpin. He knows that little girl is alive. He knows that little girl saw Electra, And so he sends a team in. He sends a team to find her and take them all out, ensuring that there are no witnesses. With them making their way up the fire escape, both Electra and Emma, they know what is on the way. Lucky for them, we have your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man who just happens to be swinging by with his spider senses going crazy because Emma Frost is inside his head. He stops everything he is doing. He goes into this building only to find himself face to face with the police. Spider-Man, he has no idea what is going on. But almost immediately, we see Electra. she starts slicing and dicing. Meanwhile, we have Emma Frost waking up the little girl and letting her know that we have to get out of here. We are going to take you somewhere safe, somewhere where all of these bad men can't come get you. Now, this little girl, she's not necessarily dumb. She's really trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Her biggest question is, are you kidnapping me? Now, Emma tells her this isn't a kidnapping. I'm your friend. Friends don't kidnap each other we're just taking you somewhere safe and she also lets her know like you can go with all those bad guys you can go with Electra or you can come with me and we'll have a good time we'll have a fun time and we'll get you out of New York now her being a foster kid she doesn't really have attachment to the parents that she lives with so if it's an option between going with Emma Frost or staying back with Electra and all of these cops that came here to kill her she's headed off with the White Queen Spider-Man trying to cut them off and figure out what the heck is going on this is where Emma does a little bit of mind manipulation, lets him know that he is going to hold them off and forget about all of this the moment they are all gone. But she also peers into his mind, 
seeing Uncle Ben, seeing everything that has happened, seeing the trials and tribulations that what made Spider-Man Spider-Man. And Emma Frost, she gives him a kiss on the cheek and she thanks him for everything he does and everything that he is about to do. Sending Spider-Man to go help Elektra before she puts all of these guys in the morgue. Emma Frost and this little girl, they head downstairs to a limo. What Emma Frost did not know is that Kingpin had a photographer standing by waiting to take the picture. Keeping this picture hidden for all of this time. Finally using it as ammo, giving it to the newspapers, and they run with it. Missing girl, last seen with the White Queen. And so it is believed that the White Queen has something to do with her death. But Emma Frost knows exactly where she is. Right now, she is in London. She has been living in England all of this time. Now, there's not supposed to be any gates for mutants, for the X-Men, for Krakoa on England any longer. Because mutants are no longer allowed inside of England. But Emma Frost being Emma Frost... At the old Hellfire Club, she has a gate hidden away. Coming out dressed like Kitty Pride, trying to have a disguise so people don't know that it is Emma Frost. She walks out of here only to realize that this place is under surveillance. Getting into the mind of the driver, telling him to go to the nearest water and drive them straight into the depths. Taking this opportunity to try and get away, Emma Frost, she takes a punch straight to the face. With Cyblockers in, throwing down a grenade so she can't turn into her diamond form. Emma Frost is being informed that she is under arrest. She is being extradited back to New York and she is going to face charges of child endangerment, kidnapping, and more than likely, murder. And so by all accounts, Emma Frost, she has been played. With Kingpin more than enjoying this day, Emma Frost, she vows that while he will enjoy this day, he will not enjoy tomorrow. Alright gang, so as we dive into this epic conclusion, we are picking up with Union Jack having Emma Frost under arrest. Bringing her into the police station, he lets her know that this really isn't anything personal. The X-Men have always been good to him, but he has to uphold the laws he is told to enforce. With a warrant going out for the arrest of Emma Frost, he had no other choice but to do this. But as they arrive at the precinct, this is where Emma Frost finds out something very interesting. With a police officer coming over to put a power dampening collar on her neck, he doesn't have side blockers. With Emma Frost reaching out with her mind, what she learns is that half of the rank and file in this precinct, they either think that telepathy is a myth, or they think that the side dampeners really cause cancer. Not only that, there are some German shepherds nearby that she is able to take control of. And in a matter of seconds, this place is going crazy. Those individuals that don't have side dampeners on, they are attacking those that do. The German shepherds, they are attacking police officers. This is all out pandemonium. And Emma Frost is having the best time with this. Making some of these police officers carry her out of here. This is an absolute cakewalk for her. She is able to walk directly out of this place with her own police escort. And so while Union Jack is trying to get everyone under control, Emma Frost has already made her getaway with both of their German Shepherds. And so Emma decides to head back to the Hellfire Club because now her goal is to find Isabel. The whole reason that she came here to begin with. She needs Isabel so she can prove that Emma Frost didn't murder her or kidnap her or whatever Mayor Fisk is trying to speculate at. Coming into the Hellfire Club, this is where she runs into Isabel. Because Isabel saw her on the news, assumed that Emma Frost came here for some kind of help. With Emma Frost filling her in on everything currently going on, saying that she just needs her to come back to America, to come back to New York City for a little bit of time, prove that you're alive, and then I will take you anywhere you want to go. And that includes Krakoa. 
but Emma also apologizes to her, saying that she never wanted to drag her into any of it. The only reason she got mixed up in any of this is because she witnessed Electra doing a murder for Wilson Fisk. Needing to get her out of the city, get her somewhere safe, they sent her to the country with horses where she could live out her wildest dreams. What we learn about Isabel is that when she was there, one summer Electra came to see her came to see how she was doing, but also to train her how to fight. Training her for an entire summer, this woman is no defenseless little girl any longer. And so with Emma Frost making her apology, she lets her know that there are going to be individuals that are about to break down the door. So prove to me what skills you have while I go sort out this mess. With Emma Frost going upstairs to get them a way out of here, we see Isabel hold them off. With them breaking down the front door, Union Jack coming in through the window. Isabel is 100% out of her league, and she quickly recognizes this, pulling out a knife and stabbing one of them right in the thigh. This guy is going to bleed out unless Union Jack helps him. This gives her the opportunity to make her escape. Heading upstairs to Emma Frost, this is where we see the two of them, they go through a gateway. Getting to safety on Krakoa, Isabel looks around and quickly recognizes this is a place she doesn't want to be. And that's because she's a city person. She loves the concrete jungle and she wants nothing to do with this lavish land that stands before her. But after a spa day and a little bit of time, Isabel makes her appearance and everything that Wilson Fisk has been saying, it gets put under question now. While Isabel may have returned, Wilson Fisk is still raising questions about everything else going on. Because while she may be clear of murder, there are still many other charges that are under observation. And so Emma Frost, she heads off to her lawyers. Starting off with the good news, she is no longer being accused of murder. Being clear of those charges, it really does lighten the load a little bit. But the bad news, it is really bad news. Because her financial misdeeds, those allegations are still under investigation. Sue Storm did have her identity faked, and a substantial loan had been granted to her. Once the mistakes had been realized, an investigation had been launched, and eventually the insurance had paid out. Now that insurance company is going to be coming after Emma Frost for that money. And so until this matter is settled, there is a warrant out for her arrest in many countries that don't recognize Krakoan amnesty deals. With Emma Frost remaining silent just for a moment, she tells them to instruct the finance teams to begin buying stocks of this insurance company. Believing that if they can buy enough stocks, she can get a majority share in the company, and she's not going to owe a company money if she owns the company. Saying goodbye to her lawyers, and letting them know that she is not going to be returning for quite some time, but she has one more thing to do before she leaves the city. And that's what takes us to the house of Will. Wilson Fisk, with the mayor waking up having Mary holding a knife directly to his throat. And Mary is under the control of Emma Frost. And Fisk quickly recognizes that she has to be close by. If she is able to control her with such effectiveness, then she has to be near. And the truth is, Emma Frost is right there in the room, telling the former kingpin that one day she is going to ask him a question. That question may come many, many years from now. It could happen weeks from now. But when she does ask, she wants him to answer honestly. Of course, that's a Assuming that he survives all of the chaos he has created in New York City. Emma Frost is not one to doubt him because she has seen the odds stacked against him time and time again and somehow he always comes out on top. But the question that she wants answers to, the question that she is going to ask, was it worth crossing me? Because one day, everything is going to come to a head. Emma Frost could be anyone around him, anyone at any time. He would never see it coming. And while she had been employed with him, she learned what patience meant. And so if he manages to wiggle free from this Devil's Reign fiasco, if he manages to somehow stay out of jail and stay alive, 
Emma Frost is still going to be there, gunning for him, waiting for the day that she slits his throat. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, like I said, this is probably my favorite issue this week. And that's because Emma Frost, she did exactly what we expected her to do. She proved her innocence in the murder, and then she went directly for Wilson Fisk. And Emma Frost will be the first to admit that Wilson Fisk, he plays a good game. The truth of the matter though, is Emma Frost has learned this game, and she has mastered it. And she could have ended all of this right here. She could have Mary slit his throat and called it a day. But she's going to toy with him to make him sit here and think about it day in and day out. Who is it going to be? Who is Emma Frost going to take over to take my life? Is it going to be Mary? Is it going to be those closest to me? Is it going to be Butch, my own son? It's much more sinister of a plan to make him sit there and sweat it. Think day in and day out, who is this going to be? When is my end going to be coming? Because killing him would be too simple. It would be too easy. Emma Frost would much rather have him suffer, have him tortured in anguish, than just slit his throat and call it a day. You know, say what you want about this new Krakoan era of X-Men. One thing they have done right is gave Emma Frost the spotlight. For the last couple years now, we have seen her truly shine and she is an unstoppable force. In the 10 deaths of Wolverine, Beast had mentioned how individuals like Logan, those willing to do the most ruthless and be the savage killer, that is what's going to win them this war. And while Logan is formidable and he is one heck of a killer, Emma Frost may very well end up being the queen of all Krakoa when this is all said and done. Though you could say that she is already that. If anybody is going to survive all of the mayhem, all of the destruction, everything that is stacked against mutant kind, it's gonna be Emma Frost. Either that, or they are gonna work with great effort to take her off the board first. Maybe I'm just overhyping this, but man, Emma Frost is my favorite thing coming out of these X-Men lines. Emma Frost and Cypher have hands down made these lines for me, and I cannot wait to see what happens next for all of Krakoa in the Destiny and Immortals X-Men line. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel in other ways, you can always hit that super Super thanks button. It will let you donate directly to the channel and it helps us out tremendously. If you can't do that, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.